First of all, thanks for coming out, everybody, for this, uh, so we can go have a staffing to take a look at the agenda today. Um, we will go ahead and start with the pledge uh, before we get into that, since we do have everybody here. All right. Don't roll. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic which is the one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, so let's jump right into... I don't know what Separate two. Uh, so we'll jump right into our first uh, resolutions. We have the financial reports, uh, budget transfers. Uh, any questions on those two? Those are pretty straightforward. We went over finance already. So. Yeah. And then uh, 98, Babcock Hall, changing the fee schedule, removing Babcock Hall from the fee schedule. Talked about that in finance. For lack of use. Mm -hmm. And we have our insurance. I don't remember if our insurance got on there for the finance meeting. Yep. Our insurance is up about 40,000. And I put the claims that are in there. I redacted the names that are associated with the claims. But the fact that we have some open, very significant open claims, it raised our insurance rates this year by about $40,000 and nobody would touch us with those on the books until those get resolved. So we couldn't really even renegotiate the rate. Unfortunately. Any idea when they may be resolved or what the status uh, of- As soon, so I was talking to Chris Hubler and he's like, you never know, especially with the one more significant one because that could be out longer the more that expands and grows. That could be out longer. The hope is, it'd be ideal again to get them out by this year or next year. He thinks we'll still be carrying some of this into next year. So that's the goal. So ideally, fingers crossed this year, but if not, it could end up rolling into next year. Um, uh, health insurance, any comments on that, Lindsay? Any questions um, on the health insurance? Well, I think I'll just mention, I mean, it's it has increased between 13 and 15% for the plans, but that is unfortunately a market standard out there. I did talk to our insurance broker, um, just making sure that we were still competitive with the pricing. Um, I also had asked if they could give me some quotes for additional, outside of like Blue Cross, Blue Shield, like an MVP or whatever, but this is the lowest cost for right now. Um, this next year, I may be looking at other options for us to see, you know, better coverage um, and lower costs. So that was something I'll work on this year, but I would still recommend this plan okay. for right now. Perfect. Uh, we also discussed the attorney expenses and the attorney transfer. Finance, yeah. mm -hmm. um, we made the agreement of finance for the energy supply agreement. Did uh, they, um... They were, they, I asked them and he said that 0 0.066 rate is a pretty good rate. And that's where you are for two years. Oh, oh for two oh, years instead of six, eight. So no, wait, I lied. No, wait, I lied. Wait a minute. No, he didn't. Why, how did that end up there? We copied this right out there. So that might need to be adjusted. I apologize for that. He didn't. Yeah, I was all, yeah, that sounded all great, didn't it? He did not adjust from the point zero. Six, six eight. Six, so the documents that are attached, there might be an error in that resolution that was sent. Um, the documents that are attached are correct. They were stuck at six point at six eight for two years. He said he didn't see it going down uh, anytime soon. So we're kind of stuck with that. Sorry so about that. Resolution needs to be modified. So we will need to make an amendment to change the point zero six six to the actual rate. I think you should probably just present a new resolution because I don't think any one of us wants to amend it to go higher. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I mean, it is what one. it is. We can just type that out and have one new one at the at the meeting. They're also going to look at our natural gas. They asked Jess to take a look at it. We currently do the same thing with natural gas, and they're going to shop and see if they can get us any better rates for natural gas too. Because with things going on, now might be the time to lock in for a couple of years, at least protect our assets for a little bit of time. Uh, the other one's closing the capital projects we had discussed. Um, I'm now I'm jumping to 105 because John, we had talked about 105, and then you had to run, and there was some discussion about after you had left, 
if that 300,000 was going to be enough, we didn't want to make a change on that um, without having, without having further discussion. Um, we had 200,000 in the existing budget, if I recall correctly, we needed another 300, yeah. $500,000. Yeah. Right? Yes. And the question that came forward was whether or not we wanted to drain completely that 200,000, the campus repair fund, because it was more than just town hall. It had other buildings associated with it and increased this amount. So we didn't drain that other one out. But we just left it at 300 because you wanted to have that wanted to have discussion, discussion, discussion with you here. I feel like this is a good start, at least. Um, and then once we actually get a point, we have a bit adjusted okay. again. Yeah. All right. We did meet with MRB was in and the whole staff met with MRB. As many as could met with them yesterday. Uh, they're going to come back with some more, more detailed drawings for the upstairs renovation, and should be closer to the numbers with what they're going to, what it's going to be. When will they be doing um, It'll be within the next month, and then we'll have another review, and then we'll have another walk, we'll have another discussion. They won't have anything as a, for a presentation to the board yet. It needs one more iteration for the staff to be comfortable and say, yeah, this is something that will fit. And then they will get approval. They'll they'll do they'll get approval and then go forward with the bidding. So we've got one more visit from them, and then they're gonna write up an engagement that we would have to enter into. And we're moving this money is just moving. We're just moving it. We're not committing it. We're just moving it. So or putting it in the capital project. The final number and do it all that. I mean, what what point is served by moving it now? Right. Because we were just trying to bring down the unassigned fund balance mm -hmm. to within our policy. No, so still move it. Yeah, we could. What the number is. I mean, it doesn't really yeah. it seems like if you're going to do the same thing again. Yeah, we, yeah, we, hopefully not. We might. I mean, I'm okay. Well, I don't think it would be 300 grand. So. Yeah, I think I agree. But um, I, I would, I'm comfortable with moving it. And then if we need to make an adjustment, then we make an adjustment. Uh, resolution 106 is what we talked about for the ARPA funding. Thanks for putting that together, Jess. Any questions on, any questions on 106? Uh, 107 is the engagement with Donegan for the bond advisory services for the WIA bond, the WIA project. Do you have any idea what this will cost us? Um, what did we say, Jim? I'm oh, sorry. For, for Donegan? Cost. To be for Donegan. To have them start. It's in the Donegan Bond Council. About 60,000. 60, yeah, 60 to 70,000 just to have people. Yeah move the papers around so in this project itself will uh, i mean the way of grant that we're going for we use to replace the acp and mill treasure road yeah and install aerators so but part of that that's another further in here but I mean, that project won't go ahead if we don't get the real money correct mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. We need to have five million to offset the three million dollar mm -hmm. bond out. Any other questions on that one? Yeah. Okay. All right. One hundred eight. So extending uh, the, the out of district sewer agreement. This is mm -hmm. one of the homes on fifth on Canandaigua Town Line Road. Uh, it's a few up from the Geneco project. They just want to connect to the Farmington sewer because they're our resident, we have to initiate the agreement, it has to be signed by, we have to sign it, then it has to be signed by the entire town board. This there, isn't the game that comes to her. No, this is, no, I, you know, I wish we could get, I wish he was, it was getting taken care of. This is somebody, they did the plan, they drew it all up, they're gonna have a pump and they're just gonna go up and out. Uh, number 109 is public hearing. For the WIA project. Yeah, 
Is that public hearing actually occurring there? Or we're, we're setting, the public, setting, we're setting the public hearing, so yeah. We close it in May. Okay. And that's uh, Handler. <clears throat> and there's another that needs to be May 20th. It's hereby ordered that a public hearing be held on May 20th, 2024. So that needs to be amended to May 20th. Um, I don't know why he puts 27th, but that's okay. How did they arrive at the second uh, where is up from the bottom of page 10? Does a typical property would be between 77, 75, and 232, 83. So there's been some. I, you and I talked about that yesterday. I just had a call in to Jeff. I, I was looking for the answer here. I can't answer that. I mean, it's an agile um, situation, isn't it? But this project wouldn't be based on. Yeah, or I, that, I, don't, I don't address it. I, I cannot answer it at the moment because I'm not sure. We talked about the OM, so objective, the rates. I don't even know if we need to increase our rate, okay, to cover the bond expenses yet at this point. So I'm not sure why we put that in there, but ask the question. So this was, this resolution was drafted. So MRB created the paperwork, then MRB created the data, and then sent it to Nadler yeah. for the write up of the resolution. Um, I had tried, I had had one but there are the very specific things that need to be in that. So yeah, that's that dollar amount. Hopefully we'll have an answer to that as to what- I've talked with Chris tomorrow morning. Yeah, where stuff. that came from, if it. I'm gonna be later today. But it would have been what he pulled. It would have been what was provided to him. So as a follow-up to that, we are pursuing a grant for this work. Correct. Correct. Yes. And the balance we're gonna end up having to bond so is the 7765 representative of what it would cost if we get the full grant and 232 representative of what we would cost the um, resident if we don't get the grant? Um, so that's the range. So the typical property will between, be between 7765 and 232.83, depending on the amount of grant funding, if any, received. So you've got your low end for maximum grant funding and you've got your high end. That's based on the 300,000. Based on that, based on that grant funding. So that's the range that has to be included probably for the attorney, probably for the attorney general or whoever else would be looking at these. Um, that that's, that's the range that would be fun, that, that it would carry full grant amount versus uh, no grant amount. And a grant amount is three hundred thousand. Did I hear? The five million is what we're going million. for. Right. Well, well, if we don't give five million bucks, it seems like there should be a bigger split between or a bigger difference than it's a seventy third, John. So two thirds of the project's paid by the Leo. We have to come up with the other third. And that issue. Um, raises my concern even more. If we are paying, if the grant's paying for two thirds of it, it seems like that range is not adequate if we don't get the proper, if we don't get grant. Mm -hmm. So I'm not, who did, I think, the, who did the numbers? The, the number, MRB. so the MRB group did the numbers. There's a report that's the, uh, and I don't have the, so, they, so MRB the, had to two, file the report, the 202B, the, to move forward with this so we could submit the 202B. So it might be worth the telephone call yeah. to so MRB to it's clarify. Just, it's just three times. Monday's meeting, right? The 232 is three times the 7765. That's all it is. So it's. Yeah, it's, so it's a, my, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Here. Yep. I got it. So if, that, if they did get to that number by saying, okay, 77 would be the baseline, and then so you have one third, and then you yes. have the two thirds. So I will, I will give a call. So in other words, 77 would be with a grant of 5 million and 232 would be without a grant? That's yes. Question. Yes. Yeah. But the larger question is, we don't get the grant, do we proceed with the project? And that's the discussion that we're going to have to, that's the difficult discussion we're going to have to have because then we're bonding the full eight and a half million. Right, and if 232 
covers that cost, that's a easier conversation. Yes. Yeah. It's greater than two thirds. Yeah. Two but that's for the typical house, yeah. not for. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's some pretty big houses in that area that are nowhere near three hundred thousand dollars in assessed values. I understand. Yeah, well, we can't really until we get that all that data from London. So yeah, and we need to get the data because they this was for your inference. So you know this resolution didn't come in finally until Wednesday, right? Wednesday at like 2.30. Three. What? 3.30. Three thirty. Uh, yeah. So the, and the only reason it's on the agenda because it has to be for the timeline right. to be able to follow that. So I will get that because that's information because in order to keep the project to meet the deadlines, we have to approve this. So we need that information to be able to approve this. So I will get that from them. Uh, resolution number 110 is a negative determination. So it's a resolution to not adopt the wayfinding study, the wayfinding sign study. Uh, and in that, even though we don't have any say over the others, uh, and this is as it, as it uh, pertains to Uptown, um, I included the values of all of the dollar values and all the wayfinding study. So we are voting, we are saying that we're not gonna adopt um, uh, the, the wayfinding study. I'm not sure whether the city actually had a vote on it, but they had a presentation from, uh, this is what Bergman uh, did the presentation to the city last year on wayfinding signs throughout the city. And, wasn't that the meeting? Negatively received. That's the one that Wasn't we that all the meeting went. that we all attended? Right. That's the one that we all went to. Meeting? Nobody was interested. No. For two and a half million. So this um this is the negative uh vote on that. That was a fun meeting. Uh resolution 111 is short-term rentals. I'm assuming there will have some uh, this is pertaining to the public hearing, so I'm assuming there will be some people speaking uh, at that. The attachment that we have in the package has the draft still has uh, 16 I, people. There. Yeah, I got your email and I emailed you back, but I know you were probably down there yeah, so you didn't see it. <clears throat> so the draft that's included in the agenda is the draft that you guys used to set the public hearing. Okay. I didn't get any direction from Mather to change that, draft, mm -hmm. so it's still the way it is. Right. But there are all those discussions you guys have in ordinance. I don't know what the rules are for changing the draft. So it's as it was. So we don't have yeah. hearing based on that draft and assuming there's in this case anyway, likely to be changes. I don't know how that's yeah, going. we didn't want to change it after we put it out and said this is what the public hearing will be on and then make adjustments and put them on the agenda. So that's why it's as is. So any discussion that we have Monday night, if we have discussion and then decide to change it change those numbers or do whatever, then we could vote on, we could vote on that amended. Didn't you think that's just redlining it? I thought that's what we did before we have the old draft with any redlining yeah, changes. Yeah, this is a brand new also. So like, when we, like if we were changing <clears throat> an existing chapter, mm -hmm. making changes to it, yeah. you would have a redline version in, yeah. in your packet. This was deleting an entire chapter yeah. and replacing it in its entirety with an entire new mm -hmm. chapter so there were no yeah. redlines. It's basically a complete replacement. But if you, I don't know, you guys are going to have to talk to Natalie about the appropriate process mm -hmm. here since you already set the public hearing. What you do next with those changes? Mm -hmm. I mean, whether you know whether you guys decide to adopt it or not, you know, if, if you don't adopt it, it goes back for further changes at that point. I don't know if that creates red lines mm -hmm. like the second draft. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, my point partially is also directed at the. People may not show up because they believe that that draft is what we're going mm -hmm. to be talking about. And really, we we changed the maximum and talked about parking. Yeah. There's uh, four changes there. Yeah. yeah. So, so where I would be is people would present. We'd have discussion. If we have significant changes, then we would have to have another. We'd have to have another public hearing based on those significant enough changes. But come up to a consensus here that that's the one that we're going to present yeah. with those changes and not because the problem is if we have the discussion set the public hearing then changes are made in ordinance that makes it kind of messy mm -hmm. but if we can come out of this with our own red line version changing numbers and making those edits 
then I would be okay closing that public hearing and advertising a new one for the new ordinance. Mm -hmm. uh, not continuing because it's different enough, but having a new one with those changes included and not changing it between now and the next town board meeting. Um, oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I think Monday we should make those amendments. Propose those, those changes. changes right. Right. What yeah. the ordinance committee agreed to. Because the public yeah. hearing is where you're supposed to yeah, hear take input, suggestions. Right. And right. There's a provision to make changes. Yeah, so we make those changes. We don't vote on them. We have a, set, a final public hearing pertaining to those changes that were made at the meeting. Uh, and then we can vote on those. So I think that's the best route for that. Yeah, so I'm hearing the on the proper procedure. What I'm hearing yeah. is we will not be voting on the short term rental. That would be my under, that would be my understanding there. Yeah. So, and I think that's the most fair way to do it because then we edit it, we put it one last edit. So sure. here's here are the changes decided at the board meeting. Put it out there and then have a new public hearing based on those changes. Yes, we can hear that. Yes. Yeah, so public comes in and they like the ordinance as it's proposed. What do we do? Well, you it depends. Do we want to do it? Too. It depends how married are people to those changes. If the public comes in and says, don't change it, we love the way it is, then that's a decision. We could we could adopt it as is and not make any changes to right. it. And then it's right. like the law is the law. But if there if there's a um, if there's a uh, majority that wants to make change significant enough changes, and that would be, I would say, in the numbers of 16 to 12 or part anything, then we've got to put it back out there again. We've also right. had communications that are not, you know, that are in the communications binder and emails and everything else that we've had on this too, not just people who've spoken. We've also had changes that came in our emails and in the communications binder that are not are. necessarily in person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The other thing to remember, there wasn't full consensus in the ordinance committee for all of those changes. So it wouldn't have made sense to draft the law right. based on when not everybody in the ordinance committee agreed on everything. I think this 12 was the only one that all four of the board members in the room at the time agreed on. Well, I, I, I was against that. So, I mean, if there's okay. four or five. I Three think. of four. Right, perhaps. right. All right, any other comments on that one? So that's the, that's what it'll be. All right, 112 is a work day, standard work day resolution for clerk and supervisor. Uh, 13, uh, and I, this is after some discussion with, with Michelle and uh, from other board members. We've been talking about this for a while. We need to get the water uh, plant appraised because the pilot's expired and we need a fair value on that because it has not been appraised. Uh, we reached out to, how many did you call Sue? We reached out to several assessors. Um, Michelle gave a list of probably five in the region. We reached out to all of those. The only one who got back uh, with a proposal was, was Kevin. Uh, he recently did a property. He did. There's a Kodak treatment plant on Lake Ontario that he just recently did. Uh, so he has the experience. His fee is $4,200 for the appraisal service. We have money in the assessor contractual line um, that we had been paying to our assessor consultant that we will not be paying. So that money is available in the assessor contractual line to pay for that. Uh, his terms are once we engage with him, his anticipation is within four weeks, he'll get a number back for that. And Michelle is asked to go with him to kind of go through the process to um, see how he does it and also make sure he, make sure he gets all the pieces because that's a complex property to yeah, make sure he gets all the nuances of who's is what. Yeah, because the town has water tanks there. Yeah, we have a pump station. Pump station. Yeah. Pump station. Right. And then... Since the pilot expired in since the 1997 pilot expired, then with this we'll have to re-enter into renegotiations renegotiations with the city uh, for the for any sort of pilot agreement for the water for the water plant. It doesn't necessarily mean we'll raise it to whatever number. No, I mean that's a 
No. Because obviously it was worth more when the agreement was signed than what. Yes. Yeah, since it was in the pilot, it never, it never got looked at. Because the city was just that tax money that they'll pay. That would be but tax. Put that back into the cost of water to us. So. Yeah, so they would pay. I mean, they pay for fire. But the school, I mean, it'd be a significant change the school. Sure. So. Yeah. All right. Uh, any questions on that one? 114 seasonal laborers. We're starting to get the staff coming up. Lindsay's starting to get bigger, so we've got a few. We're getting there. They'll be trickling in. Before you know it, there'll be hundreds of people for all of you. Speaking of staff. Uh, 115, uh, appointment of the full-time deputy clerk. Uh, Crystal, do you have anything on that to share? We hired Jaron Outhouse, for those of you that don't know, um, and she starts on Monday. We're super excited. How many applicants did you 25. have? That's it? That's it. <laughs> so 25 applicants. Wow. So that was... Uh, is she going to do the town board meeting minutes that night? And she's starting on that. Yeah. <laughs> she's going right into it. She'll be here. <laughs> so Crystal and Dick conduct um, eight interviews out of those 25 very qualified candidates. Um, we're very excited to onboard Jaren. Mm -hmm. She'll be a great fit. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, 116. It's like the gift that keeps on giving. Uh, this is the traffic island within the cross circle, Fox Ridge, in the town of Canada, went to the Fox Ridge Homeowners Association. Any comments or <coughs> from that, Jim? Or any questions for why Jim did, on that? Why do they want it? So they can maintain it. This goes back a long ways. The town originally started Fox Ridge. We went to the center of the island. Well, they were concerned that the town was liability. Uh, someone who injured maintaining the center islands of the cul de sacs. So, we, we do now to take dedication with the council. We need it back to the HOA so they can maintain it. We have an easement over it for maintenance of our pipes. So, they want to look a certain level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, it's a liability all the time yeah. if someone gets injured on it. And I haven't heard otherwise. I did get a phone call the other day about someone who has been involved in this project for a while. Now saying that for some reason, the HOA's attorney is saying that they don't want this. So that's up to them. Yeah. But everything I've heard is in conversations that you and I have had that I've had with the HOA is they don't care if they own it or we do own it. They just want to be able to have it, and take care of it. And this way it gives them to take care of it. Uh, 117 summer camp, three-year proposal with the YMCA, which is very exciting. Uh, we have 118 and 119, we have two resignations, an MEO and a CEO. Uh, 120 is a water, drinking water report. So thanks for doing that, Jim. Important. Thanks for doing that, Courtney. I should have known. Thanks for doing that, Courtney. <laughs> uh, 121 is, is, is sureties. Pretty straightforward. Uh, and we're surplusing the dump truck. 122. Uh, 123 is another one that didn't get, that didn't come in until the very end. And that was a 10 year lease agreement with Stryker, uh, Mark Stryker for Kimmar Farms. The reason that they need, they already have a, a, a lease agreement uh, and we're three or four years into it. For Mark to be able to apply for the funding that he wants for some of the water quality projects that we're asked, that we're working on, and also some of the uh, other, the no-till, some, some of the grant programs, he needs to have a longer lease agreement to be able to provide. So uh, Chris drew up the lease agreement he sent the terms over and Mark has already, Mark has already signed the lease agreement uh, and we have it. We're just waiting for the approval and then we'll sign the lease agreement and then we'll have a 10 year extension with him for that property. How long? What did he pay for? Uh, it's like 2,300 a year. It's 20, I would say 2,300 with $150, $200 a year escalation. How long has he had it? Good leasing so far. I don't know how long it goes back to leasing it. 
So really well. Well. He's been leasing it for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Years. Yeah. So I thought. A long time. So he has a long history there. All right. Any, and then County Road 22 project. That is the, um, the indoor sports facility. We have been asked by, and we'll have a more protracted discussion on this, obviously, but they are building the indoor sport turf sports facility uh, near Eagle Gymnastics. Their footprint is shrinking. So they want to build it smaller to, you know, obviously financial and other reasons. They've made the decision to make it smaller because that changes their application. Technically, they might, the board could say, no, that's too much of a change. We want you to go through the whole process and application over again. We can talk about it and make the determination and say, it's not significant enough of a change. You're okay. I don't think that's entirely. What did I, what did I, un they, what did I undo on that? So it's the same process that you guys did with Creek View. When Creek View um, was proposing a change to the number of buildings they had on phase Two, two, um, to reduce it from 96 to 72, you just the board is asked to consider whether that that change is significant enough to impact the local law designating them as an MUO yep. district. This is the same thing. They wouldn't necessarily have to go back through the entire planning board site plan application process again. It would just be that the town board would have to amend the local law if you were to yeah, decide okay. that that was significant yes. enough, which would you know, just be a the typical right. local law process that you're used to. The oh. truth being that they have two buildings, they they had initially proposed 14,300 square feet each, now they're proposing 1,200 or 12,400 square feet each. So it's not a huge, you know. Shrinking it yeah. a couple thousand square feet for each building that is the only change in that moving them. It's not impacting the setbacks that were a part of the language in the local law that we've already adopted. Okay. I know the planning board doesn't see it as a concern. I've spoken with, and I know they can't. We need to weigh in and advise them. I've spoken with Chuck. Yeah, the planning board has not done their final approval yet because we told them this was yeah. happening and that the board had to decide it. Well, I mean, there's no action proposed on your agenda for this. Mm -hmm. You just have to decide if it's significant enough to impact the penny law. And then the planning board's just waiting to. There is waiting to hear that. It's just driven by cost. Yeah. You think so? Yeah, yeah there's you, a few you, issues in play. Um, one yeah. is just the overall size and dynamic of the business he wants to run. Um, and the other one is, is he doesn't want to jump in. Mm -hmm. Right away. So he wants to kind of minimize and see how the business grows. I got one or one inch. Yeah, he basically changed his business model a little bit. So, yeah, so. Did he actually change the size of the turf facility or just change the size of some of the buildings associated with it? Some of the spaces associated. So it's the turf is actually the same size, though. Yeah, for yeah. the most part. When I met with him and his architect team, architecture team, they came in, there's Few things with code that once you get over 14,000 square feet, it just doesn't make sense. And then his business model is, well, that doesn't make sense either. So we're just gonna you know, pull it in a little bit and keep the same ideals and just as a practice facility. So super simple concept, but just shrunk it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on that one? All right, so we will have two executive sessions to discuss the employment history of a particular individual. So there will be two. Um, and also it's not on here, but I think it deserves discussion. Uh, we don't need to have a discussion on it now. Uh, I would encourage everybody to read the memo that Mr. Nadler sent, that our attorney sent about the farm labor housing. That I think that merits a, we should have a have a discussion on that and see what direction and our thoughts on that. Um, but just to give everybody a heads up that we'll have that in some in our one of our priority business sections to share that share that memo, share his determination, and then see what we can go do going forward. Uh, any thoughts or concerns from any sharing on that? I think he's going to reach out to Bob as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I'll make sure that we have that. Um, 
I knew there was some in there. I knew I'd gotten feedback from, from Sarah about, and I'd heard from Terrence about what he was planning to do about a year and a half ago. Um, this is interesting because he's working with the federal program. So there are a lot of layers and nuances to this, but I think it's, it's a chance for us to go through and look and make sure that we're aligned and taking advantage of what, uh, what he shared, what our attorney shared with us. I need to ask Chris a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. One of the issues is sprinkling your that. Mm -hmm. I think when Matthew Carl was here, he said, you no, know, there's some, if you called it this, but his uh, business ethics wouldn't allow him to do that. So, I mean, you, that was part of that discussion then, I mean, he's still subject to the building code. I mean, whatever he builds has to be current state standards and whatever. I had a conversation with Bob, and he's put, putting a sprinkler in. I mean, so he, that, he's come to that determination, right? And so he's going to meet, you know, he meets what what, what, what one says. I just saw a memo from Chris Nedler this morning that said that he doesn't need to install the sprinkler. Yeah. That's the one that we're going to discuss. That's what we're going to discuss. We're, we'll discuss that at the board meeting. Well, there were two memos regarding farm housing that one was, um, Chris's memo, which was very detailed, yes. that responded to Terrence's, Terrence's request. request. Right. And then the next one was what I just received this morning, which was specific to Bob, okay. Bob which said that um, he didn't think Bob needed to install okay. sprinklers. So I think that's why we we yeah we need yeah. to have that discussion, and we need I think we just need to tighten up because there are federal there are other things in play that kind of they're late. I mean it's it's You'd think it would be simple, it'd be simple, but you have local, you have state, you have federal. Mm -hmm. And county. And county, and they don't always talk well to each other, and they don't always have the same interpretation of what is what. Um, and I think we should talk about strategically where we want it to go. Yeah. So we just had a conversation about workforce housing this morning with LDC, and uh, this certainly comes into, under that umbrella, you know, maybe not. That extent of their identity farms, but they're going to build that kind of housing. But I guess it would give some the ordinance to make something to do in the future. And, the, and to stay competitive yeah. once short term rentals go away, right? Yeah. Because they'll, they're never, they're, yeah. they're just, once good. it's done, once that's done, it's never going to be an issue. Oh, yeah, again. never again. Once that law is passed, <laughs> there will never be a question. We can go back and finally resolve the chicken. Hey, every time I bring that up, I get darts thrown at me. I'm small for chickens. I have chickens. I it, it anyhow, all right. It reduces anyhow, the amount of food waste that goes into any, our Anyhow, garden. moving on. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Terry. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> it was fun. I see a few people having ticks right now because of that comment. So, um, anything else? Any comments or questions? Okay. Just, oh. just one thing. I, I was talking to Murphy the other day, but after the ordinance meeting, I guess that issue of sprinkling. You said that you believe that next year the state is going to insist on single family homes, everything being sprinkled. Yeah, in. so right now currently there's really four but three types of buildings that don't require sprinklers, residential, single family dwellings, dual family dwellings, basically duplex, and then townhomes, the fourth one being an offshoot of town home. Um, every lobby day that the state has had, every association organization is really making that push. They tried to make it with the 2020 code updates. The housing associations, builders associations, they all went out for that one. Now because of green energy practices, battery storage, uh, EV chargers within dwellings and all of that, the state is now kind of Really looking into it. It's the last draft that came out that they had mm -hmm. every single one. Over a certain square footage, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. your basic, it's not a tiny home. Right. Right. So. Well, that will make housing. That'll help make it so more affordable. So much more affordable. <laughs> if you swear not to buy uh, a battery driven <laughs> car, can you avoid it? <laughs> How many chickens do maybe? you have, Terry? <laughs> yeah. Maybe we could get variances. You, you could sign an easement, a battery easement. Battery to, easement. Right? And you sign battery rights. You give up your battery rights, and then you don't need sprinklers. Battery rights. So, yeah, everything's a challenge. So, all right.
Thank you, everybody. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay. All in favor? Aye. All right. Let's adjourn. Thanks, everybody, for coming down. Thanks, guys.